Hey, what is going on guys? It is your boy Franzi back in another Genshin Impact video and today I'm going to be going over the best possible build for Ganyu as a main DPS and also doing a showcase of max level 90 Ganyu. So I'm going to get right into it because this is going to be a bit of a longer video. So I'm going to start with her talents. Her auto attack talent has six consecutive shots with a bow, a normal charge attack, a plunging attack, but there is one special thing about Ganyu which actually is huge for her. She has on her charge attack, she has a charge level one where she fires a normal cryo damage arrow. And then on charge level two, she fires a frost lake arrow, which deals cryo damage. And then it also blooms and deals AOE cryo damage. And it's, as you guys can see, the charge level one is 186% at level seven and 192 when you get the frost lake arrow, which is the charge level two. But the bloom damage is 326%, which is just ridiculous compared to the charge level. And just for a quick example of what this looks like, this is the charge level 2, as you can see that is the bloom, and that is just the regular one. As you see, it's not much of a difference in the time that you have to uphold it, but you get the massive bloom damage if you hold it just a tiny bit longer. Moving on to talent 2, she places an ice lotus down, dashes backwards, and the ice lotus basically attracts enemies to it, and it explodes after 6 seconds, dealing 185% at level 6. Has a 10 second cooldown as well as you see it looks like that it's a good use to escape from enemies basically and then you can you know they lure into there you can shoot them and deal your ice damage it's a really strong attack and very useful for her her elemental burst is celestial shower it basically has an orb in the sky and has an aoe area around it and ice shards fall in this area as you can see it looks very similar to this and it just deals continuous ice damage to enemies in the area and going into her passive talents, when you fire a frost flake arrow, the crit rate of the next frost flake arrow, which is your charge level 2 arrow, is increased by 20%. This is massive because frost flake arrow is basically one of, one of your biggest forms of your DPS. You know, obviously your elemental skill and elemental burst, but after that, I think you're going to be wanting to use the frost flake arrow most of the time. So this is massive, being able to boost the, the crit rate of your next frost flake arrow by 20%. The next one is when you are standing in the air, area of effect of your ultimate, you gain a 20% cryo damage bonus, and that's also... Um, that's also applied to the rest of your party. Then her last one is just a simple, you get 15% of your ores back when you craft a bow. It's pretty basic and, you know, boring. But moving on to weapons, personally I have the Amas bow because I summoned on the standard wish banner and that is just one of the best bows. If you have the Amas bow or the Skyward Harp, then absolutely use those. It's a no-brainer. They're five stars. They have the substats of attack percent and crit rate, both fantastic stats. I mean, the three I think you want are attack percent, crit rate, or crit damage. All three of them are great. And obviously the passes on both of them are fantastic as well. So if you have a five star, absolutely no question to ask, use it. Now, if we're talking about four star weapons, one of the ones that I would not recommend using is the Rust. I know it's a really, really good bow for a lot of people, but the problem is it decreases your charge attack by, by 10%, which in my opinion for Ganyu, you're going to be wanting to use your charge attack more than your regular one. So I, I definitely would not use the Rust, which is you know a popular one for a lot of other units. Definitely wouldn't use it for Ganyu though. If we're talking about other ones that are gotcha or you know pay to win ones then the ver the viridescent hunt from the battle pass is actually very good as well it gives you that crit rate percent which again one of the three that i would focus on for the most part and when you attack with a normal or aimed it has a 50 percent to generate a cyclone which just deals more damage uh based on your attack so again this is a really good one if you have bought the battle pass and like say you bought the battle pass this season and you're wondering what to pick and you don't have a good boat Verdis verdescent hunt is very very good and i would recommend it the crit rate substat is very good now other bows from the gacha that are four star that i'd recommend the um stringless is a good in between it hasn't doesn't have the best substat i mean elemental mastery is okay it's not the best like i said i think the, the other three are better but the passive is just so good for her in particular because your elemental skill damage, yeah, that's not going to be great because it's not really for dealing damage, but the elemental burst damage is going to be really, really good. So, I mean, increasing the damage of both of them is going to be very good. It's it's kind of one of the lower ones. I wouldn't really recommend this. This is more of a sub DPS Ganyu build where you kind of bring her out, use her elemental skill, use her elemental burst, and then switch her back out. You don't keep, This is not a bow you want to use if you plan on having her as your main damage dealer. So moving on to the next gacha four star, the Sacrificial Bow. I don't think this one's very good because it deals with energy recharge and uh, damaging opponents with your elemental skill. And unfortunately for Ganyu, her elemental skill is probably the worst part of her kit. It's not bad by any means, but her elemental burst and her frost like arrow are both so strong that the elemental skill is probably the worst part. So the energy recharge along with a passive that deals with her elemental skill just isn't where it's at. 
Again, I've gone over the rust. The decrease on your aim shot damage is just too bad, and you're not going to be dealing normal attack damage with Ganyu for the most part, so I wouldn't recommend that one. The Favonius Warbow is technically a gacha 4-star, but you do get one copy free to play, so I won't really count this as a gacha. So the last 4-star gacha boat is the Alley Hunter, which is very, very good. It has crit rate as its substat, and it has a really nice passive for every 4 seconds characters on the field. Their attack is increased by 4% up to 8 at max refinement. And same thing with the crit, 4 to 8, crit damage, excuse me, from 4 to 8. And it has a max stack of 5 times, so you can get this up to 20% at the lowest refinement, which I'm sure a lot of people probably have. Again, this is cleared when you leave the field or you take damage, but either way, that's very, very strong. As for which 4-star gacha bow or pay-to-win bow is the best, I'd say it's between the Alley Hunter, the Sack, or I'm sorry, the Stringless, which is probably not one of the better ones, but I'd still put it up there, and the Ver Distant Hunt. I think the, those three are easily the best. As for free-to-play bows, the Royal Bow is technically free-to-play because it's in the Star Glitter Exchange. I'm going to count it as free-to-play because, I don't know, it's, it's on that in-between phase. But either way, this one's not very good because when you it does deal with attack percent as a subset, which is nice. But the thing is, it's supposed to increase your crit rate on its passive. But when you have, uh, but when you get a crit itself, it removes this and starts all over. So with Ganyu, you're going to be dealing a lot of crits in general. So this is just not going to be very, very helpful. And then the other three are the prototype crescent, which you have to hit weak weak spots on enemies to get the increased movement speed and attack percent. So again, this is just not the best I, it's, it's tough for me to say it's it's really not very good if you can get this passive going it is good but hitting weak points is kind of tough sometimes Vonius warbo is okay it deals with energy recharge and you know it's basically if you're using her as a sub dps and you're switching her in dealing your crits and then switching out you know basically it's about energy recharge sub dps ganyu not main dps i wouldn't recommend this and also i know it says gotcha but you do get one copy of this for free the rest that you would have to pull from the gacha so i kind of consider it free to play but anyway the next one would be the compound bow which is not for ganyu at all <laughs> physical damage bonus is completely useless for ganyu you will not use that at all i mean this the passive is okay but this is so bad that it's not worth it you won't you don't use physical damage bonus on ganyu the black cliff war bow from the star glitter exchange is actually really really good though like really really good for ganyu this is, and like I said, this is kind of the in-between free-to-play paid because you kind of have to spend premium gems to get the Star Glitter Exchange material. But either way, I'm going to count it as free-to-play because eventually you could get this. It has the crit damage substat, which is very, very good on Ganyu. And then after you defeat an enemy, your attack is increased by 12% at lowest refinement for 30 seconds. And it can stack up to three times. Very, very, very good. You can get an attack increased up to 36%. On lowest refinement that's that's absurd that's very very good I think if the best free-to-play bow would be the black cliff war bow followed probably by ah man it's kind of tough because neither of these are very good but maybe this if you can hit the weak points the free-to-play bows aren't very good for gotten you if I'm just being honest with you guys I'd really I mean if you can get lucky enough and pull one of the four star gotchas or you know maybe the five obviously use those and then B black cliff war bow would probably be the next best but moving on to artifact sets so this is where it gets interesting for ganyu you have to almost always have a two-piece set of the blizzard strayer you that cryo damage plus 15 percent is so so important it's it's more important than almost anything i mean her frost like arrow her elemental skill and her elemental burst all deal cryo damage so that two piece on the blizzard strayer is almost like essential so for the last two pieces on your four piece artifact set this becomes very flexible i mean as you can see i'm new using the noblest oblige but you could use the blizzard strayer and that way you can get when an enemy is affected by cryo their crit rate is increased by 20 percent so that i mean that's literally everything ganyu does from her far flake arrow to her elemental skill to her elemental burst they all you know affect enemies with cryo so you will get a basically passive 20 percent increase to your crit rate now, the second part of this is, like I said, but I've said before in many videos, I don't think this is very good because it's sometimes you can't freeze enemies and you, you know, especially when it comes to bosses and stuff like that. So this is not going to be the best, but if you can manage to freeze an enemy, then you get an additional 20% crit rate. So you have a 40% crit rate from your artifacts, from the passive, passively from your artifacts, which if you can get that, that's amazing. But for the most part, I would just expect a flat 20% from this, which is still good, by the way. It's not bad, but it's not like crazy to the point where you have to build it that way. So another option opposed to just the four piece, it would be the two piece of the cryo damage. You always want that. 
And then another option would be the Noble Supplies, which is what I'm currently running. But I'm honestly only running that because I can't get better pieces of this. But this is by no means bad. I think this is also very, very good. Your Elemental Burst Damage is very strong. And just getting a flat 20% increase to it will be very, very beneficial. And then the last thing you could run, I think is probably one of the, you know, the pro probably the third of the three that I would run is you can just get a flat 18% attack rate from the Gladiator's Finale set. So I would probably recommend either the Blizzard Strayer or the Noble Sublige, depending on the substats of your artifact. So because I am using the two-piece Noble Sublige instead of the four-piece Blizzard Strayer, I am not getting a 20% increase in my crit rate. It is only at 45.9%. If I could get that extra 20%, then I would be at 65, which I think anywhere between 60 and 75 crit rate is just great. And then my crit damage is only 72.3. But the thing about Ganyu that she does get massive crit damage just from leveling her up like it's at 160.7 i keep in mind my artifact set isn't great i've i mean i've tried many many times to get better artifact sets but this is probably the best i can get at the moment ideally you want your crit rate to be somewhere between 60 and 75 percent and then your crit damage to be you know it's probably two times maybe higher than that but typically somewhere around there and then obviously i have the cryo damage bonus from my goblet as well but onto the specifics of the artifacts that you want. Obviously for here, you just want the HP that is all you can get, and you just want crit damage, crit rate, attack percent. Those are the big three that you're gonna want on all of these. Again, same goes for the feather. The hourglass, you want attack percent. There's no question there. And then <clears throat> for the following three, you want crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge is okay. And then maybe flat attack, something like that. Something in between there. The goblet. Of course, you always want the typing that you're using. So for Ganyu, she's a cryo user. You always, always, always want the cryo damage bonus. Again, you can see I'm literally using a Bloodstained Chevalier's Goblet. This has nothing to do with the set, but because the set is five pieces, you can throw a random piece on. But as long as it has the cryo damage, that's all that matters. Always focus on getting that first and then building on the substats later. And then for the circlet, you always want either crit rate or crit damage, in my opinion. As you can see, I've got crit rate and then I've got crit damage as one of the substats. The other ones are really, really bad, but hey, you got, you got to deal with what you're dealt with, you know. Hopefully you can get attack percent in there and then maybe energy recharge, something like that. Flat attack is good as well. But those are pretty much the substats you want on all of those. And like I said, you can either use this this set right here, what I'm using, or you can just do the four piece blizzard strayer. But make sure that for your total crit rate and crit damage, you want something between Oh, I've scrolled too far down. You want something between 60% because that's a pretty, you know, that's pretty roughly where you want to be for max crit rate. And then for crit damage, you want something at least two times higher. Do keep in mind from your talents that you will get a 20% increase crit rate on your next frost like arrow. So you don't want your crit rate to be too high or else you're just wasting your crit rate. Because if you get a 20% increase like I'm getting, I'm going to have my, my frost like arrow have a crit rate of 70%. And that's, you know, I, ideally you want like 60% and then you can get it up to 80. So for the showcase, I decided to use a Spiral Abyss level. Now, obviously there are some buffs from the Spiral Abyss that are helping me. So these aren't exactly the real numbers, but do keep in mind my artifacts are kind of dog. So they kind of evens out there. But basically I brought Bennett and Chi Chi for, you know, Bennett's obviously his ultimate and Chi Chi for more crit. And here we go. Here is uh, Ganyu's ultimate as well to get the in increased or cryo damage while in it. And boom. 30k critical damage off the uh, Frostflake Arrows AoE. It's ridiculous the amount of damage that Ganyu can put out. Like, and this is all AoE too. Like, keep that in mind. That is the big part about this. Is that look at that 23k? No more buffs. No more buffs from Ganyu or Bennett. 23k from crits on her Frostflake. It's ridiculous. Like, she is so so strong. Her AoE is just absurd. And the fact that she can freeze people too is just so strong. I think Ganyu is easily one of the top five units in the game. Her damage output is ridiculous. I think she's easy S tier. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that you should just, you know, you would need to summon for her or anything because she's broken. She is very strong, but she's not like game breaking or anything. And, you know, obviously Zhao and all that. But she is just incredible. She really is so, so strong. But that is going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I appreciate all the love and support lately. I mean, I reached over 500 subs lately, and that is just ridiculous to me. I really wanted to have my Discord set up by then, but unfortunately not. I'm getting to it. I'm working on it. TBA soon, though. Thank you so much, and I'll definitely catch you guys in the next one. Peace.